Okay, so in this run series, um, I almost like wanted to name it, please shut the but then I figured that might be a little too crass and I might possibly have to reiterate something that I've already mentioned in one of a previous rant episode in which I wanted to profess and start with that I am passionate about uh, many things and I can come across fired up. However, my intentions are pure. My heart is sincere and I'm very frank and straightforward. So this is what you get. Welcome to Events Demystified Podcast, the rant series, where we go off the calf and say it as it is, tackling anything and everything in the AV production, technology, and event industry that not a lot of people are willing to talk about. The rant series is short and spicy, comes out twice a month in between the more tamed interview-style episodes. This podcast is brought to you by Tree Fan Events, a woman-owned boutique event production agency, and your host is Anka Trafan. Thanks for tuning in. So what is this rent episode all about? Well, I hear every so often someone with like a huge chip on their shoulder saying something like, well, my event is better than yours. Well, you know what? That might be the case and good for you. Let me applaud you. But guess what? We're all doing our best, okay? So some events, they have all the fluff and all the money and they look beautiful and they are presented in the most high-end fashion and that's fantastic. Not all clients fit within that category, okay? So in many cases, you would see someone come to you with, this tiny of a budget. And if you're a smaller agency, say like me, I have a hard time turning down if I can help them, if I can support their event. Now, obviously, because your budget is this tiny, at a minimum, you can be sure that it's going to have crystal clear sound. Everybody is going to hear well, and they're going to be able to see the screens or whatever the visual means that you have to present your content. And they're going to be able to interact and have some type of engagement. If this was a virtual event, we'll be talking a completely different setup. And even there, there's options to create your event, be an event and not just a Zoom meeting. Can we stop calling Zoom meetings? events. Somebody, please, I should make a separate episode just on that alone. But with this virtual event and hybrid event reality, there's also this, well, my platform is better than yours. And if you go and do a little bit of a comparison across the board, you realize that at a minimum, all platforms basically provide the same basic things. And if you just go and do like, say I went and I took three platforms, I'm not going to name them. And I did a comparison and I just wanted to see how they describe themselves. How do they present themselves as to what type of services they provide? So I'm just going to read the three descriptions of those three different platforms and how similar they all are, right? So the first one is the most complete meetings and events platform that includes everything you need to promote, plan, and analyze your virtual hybrid and in-person event from start to finish. The other one is the event management platform that powers continuous engagement to drive better results for virtual in-person and hybrid events and basically provides everything you need to raise the bar for your events, whether your audience is joining in person or virtually. The other platform is an all-in-one event management platform that makes planning, producing, and relieving event experiences easier than ever. So you read all these descriptions and you're like, hmm, which one must be the platform that I need? Because they all have a virtual venue where, you know, the attendees might have one level of another of immersive experience based on the interactive programming that you're creating for both your digital and on-site audiences. They all potentially 
provide a studio, a virtual studio that can produce professional, reliable streams. If you have the right people running it, they all provide some type of event marketing in which you can promote your event with some very beautiful, easy to build landing pages and branded pages that are designed to drive registration and ticket sale. They all have the on-site optimized in-person experience with the capability to, you know, maybe do badge printing, registration, and lead retrieval. And then you're like, okay, well, that sounds great because I certainly want to plan an extraordinary event. I want to be able to promote my event. I want to leverage this fully integrated registration and email marketing and event website builder tool that you're promoting to gain the most out of my investment. And they also have the ability to potentially help you along the way with services that include some type of end-to-end event management and customize the experience, craft the event in a way that it really enhances the entire event lifecycle. All of this want to ensure that your virtual and in-person attendees have a great event. And some of them even promise this continuous engagement before, during, and after your event, no matter how much of your audience attends, which I'm still kind of sort of questioning how that truly in reality works because I have been part of some of those communities and I've moved on pretty fast. To be honest, that never worked for me. It sounds so glossy and so beautiful and so sparkled with unicorns. In reality, things don't always play out that way. Now, analyzing your events, getting powerful data and reporting based on all the integrations that are happening, I think that is one of the most important things that you have to consider because it is important to have complete control and have all your mission critical data at your fingerprints, not just during the event and post event, potentially even before the event happens. So you have some type of knowledge, like what it's worth investing in? Like, is my audience going to spend all their time in the lobby or are they going to spend their time consuming content? Are they going to be doing just networking? Are they going to be checking out the virtual booths and interacting with sponsors? Anyway, those are all great things that most platforms, they do really promise and And then it's up to you to decide, okay, so out of all the things, what are the things that really matter to me? So I suggest start with creating a very simple Excel spreadsheet in which you get to prioritize the things that are important to you. So I'm going to share really quick something based on some of the platforms that I've worked with. I know more of than others because there's only like about 300 platforms. So you have to be choosy, you know, as to, okay, what's something that is going to work for me? And I don't have time to really demo 300 platforms. But some of the things that are really should be something that to be considered are things that matter to your event. So let's look at this really quick and then you can create your own thing based on what you care about. Okay, so something that I would just start with like a very simple comparison is like, okay, I'm gonna just have a bunch of event platforms lined up and then what are some of the things that I care about? How about registration? How about the virtual event organizer? How does that stream happen? How about the management? Can speaker register themselves? Is there any speaker management happening? Is there a speaker web page? Do we need to you know, create that separately within our event landing page itself? Can sponsor register? and pay themselves? Do we have to take care of that? What is the sponsor management looking like? The sponsor web page, their virtual booth. Event marketing, what does that look like pre-registration? Networking and engagement. Can attendees post to the newsfeed? How is the networking going to happen? How is it structured? And what about the sessions, the education sessions? Are you able to restrict attendance by session, especially if this is something like of an educational conference that you need to get credits for? This was something that was super important for one of the conferences that we are working on. Can you record some of the credits and send those certificates for each one of the attendee members? Is there a trade show, exhibits? What does 
does that look like? What is the lead capturing look like? And of course, analytics, you do want to have good analytics. The design, how do we design? How do we brand? And then at the end, obviously, there is the question of pricing. How does that platform price itself in comparison with all the other platforms? Here's something else that I need to touch on really quick. You know, every so often I get a client that I would talk to and then I would ask, you know, what is the budget that you have in mind for this event? And the answer is, oh, we don't have a budget because this is the first time we're doing this. You spend time to put on a proposal and you send them the cost of what it would take to do this event. And then they come back with like, oh, but this is not within our budget. What? Well, first off, you said that you don't have a budget. Well, please do share even the most imaginary number that you already have in your mind because we know that you do. So then I don't waste my time creating this fantastic experience that is not within your means because you from the start decided that you have a budget, but you're not going to share it. And that is just messed up. Okay. Straight up messed up. I know that I have a budget when I go and I buy a car because I have a budget. I'm not going to go and look at Lamborghinis. I'm going to maybe look at, I don't know, um, Subarus and <laughs> Hondas and, uh, Acuras. But I already know I have a budget, even though that budget is not necessarily, you know, 100% fixed. I know that if I'm going to get, a, I don't know, an Acura, it's not going to cost the same as a Honda. And, and if I'm willing to get that Acura, obviously I will pay more for it. Or if I'm willing to spend a splurge on an Audi for some reason or another, I... I know you have a budget. Please be honest and share it. We can have a conversation if this event is within my means or not. So we're not both wasting each other's time. Okay. So let's do that. Oh God. How did I stray to that topic? I have no idea, but this is it for today's because I really want to stop this episode from going way too long and we are going to touch on the budget in another episode. So stay tuned for that for sure. Thank you for listening to the Rant Series of Events Demystified Podcast. If you enjoyed this series and the other interview-style podcast episodes, please take a moment to review it and rate it. If you'd like to take it one step further, feel free to share it with your network. Connect with Anchor on social by tagging at Events Demystified Podcast. And if you'd like to learn more about Tree Fan Event Services and find out if we're a good fit in supporting your event, can we help your event be successful with a 20-minute free consultation? Link in the episode's notes. Thanks for tuning in.